All right, hey, boys and girls, uh, time for another edition of Mr. Bell's Sixth Grade. Today we're going to be talking about solving multi-step problems with uh, fractions and mixed numbers, okay? And all that means is you're going to be given a word problem, which I know all of y'all just adore, and let me get actually on the right page. There we go. Uh, and you got to kind of look at the problem, read it, and try to decipher what it is exactly you need to do, okay? Uh, what operations to perform, how to go about solving it, and then coming up with an actual answer. All right, you don't just start adding the numbers together that you see in the problem. All right, that's not always the way it's going to be solved, so you actually got to think about it. Okay, um, so here's our first problem. It says John is cooking enough lentils for lentil barley soup and lentil salad. I'm going to stop right there because some of y'all might be saying, Mr. Bell, please tell me what is a lentil. I have no idea. And quite frankly, it doesn't even matter what a lentil is, but I, I think it's a bean, okay? Um, I've, I've eaten it before, and it looks like a bean. It's kind of kind of small, but um, if I'm not mistaken, it's a bean. So, and apparently it goes in soup and also salad. So here we have the lentil barley soup recipe calls for three quarter cups of dry lentils, and the lentil salad recipe calls for one and one half cups of dry lentils. So John has this one eighth cup scoop, and it wants to know how many scoops of dry lentils will John need to have enough soup for the for enough for the soup and the salad. Okay, so that tells me that let me get my writing utensil out and ready to go. That we need to combine. All right, well, first of all, let's look at the problem. All right, I don't care about what he's cooking. I don't care about anything else. All I need to know about is what am I doing. So I have three quarter cups of dry lentils for this for the salad for the soup rather and then one and a half cups for the um, for the salad so I know if I'm going to try to get scoops of this if I'm just like it's in a big bag and I want enough scoops for both of these then I need to figure out how much this is total okay I got to add these two numbers together so I'm going to put some parentheses and I'm going to say let's go ahead and start with one and a half I'm going to take the one and a half cups and I'm going to add it to the three quarter cups. Okay, and that's going to tell me how many lentils I need total. Then I'm going to take that amount and I'm going to divide it by the one eighth cup scoop. That way I can just say, ooh, I need three scoops or whatever the scoop number is. And I can just scoop out that much. And then I know I have enough for both items that I'm cooking. Okay, so I'm going to divide that answer by one eighth. All right, so if you think back to fifth grade, you were introduced, maybe even earlier, fourth grade, you were introduced to something called PEMDAS, all right? And that stands for Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally, which also tells us what order to perform certain operations in. In this case, I've created this problem, and I, I knew in my head when I did it that I wanted to do this first, so I put it in parentheses, all right? And that reminds me that I need to do these operations first, and then after I get my answer, I'm going to divide by one-eighth, okay? So I want to add one and one-half, to three quarters. Now, in order to add these two numbers together, being fractions, I know they have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to kind of rewrite this, and I want to know what that common denominator is. So it's going to be the least common multiple between two and four. So the least common multiple between two and four is going to be four. So I know I want my denominator of both of these fractions to be four. So the question is, what did I do to each one of these to get four. Okay, so what did I do to four to get four? Well, I multiplied by one. All right, that means in order to keep this fraction equivalent to this fraction, I also have to multiply the top by one. All right, one times three is three. Then I look at this fraction and say, okay, what did I do to the two to get to four? Well, I multiplied it times two. That means in order to keep this fraction equivalent or equal, I have to multiply the top times 2 also. So 2 times 1 is 2. All right. So that is my altered equivalent fraction All right, for this equation. And I'm going to just complete out the entire expression. Okay. So now i got to add 1 and 2 quarters to 3 quarters. With adding fractions, you do not need to turn a mixed number into an improper fraction. You can leave it just like it is. You can add the whole numbers if, they're, if they both have whole numbers, and then you can add the fractions. The only thing you have to be concerned about is if 
your two your fractions that you add together if you have an improper fraction, meaning you have uh, a larger top than you do the bottom, a larger denominator, or a larger numerator than the denominator. Then you have to turn it into a mixed number and then add the whole number to the original whole number. Now, I think that's what's going to happen here, so let's check. So now that I have the fours and the denominators, I can go ahead and add these two fractions together. So I know I'm going to be left with one. I'm going to kind of keep this in parentheses for now so I can separate from this. And I know I'm going to have four in my denominator. All right, and then I'm going to leave the parentheses and I'm going to leave the dividing by one eighth. All right, so when you're adding fractions, all you have to do is add the tops, okay, because my denominators are the same. All I have to do is add the top. So two plus three is five. All right, so I know I have an improper fraction because I have five in the numerator and I have four in the denominator. So I'm going to kind of come over here and finish this problem. So I have one and then I have this, this um, improper fraction. So I'm going to add my one to whatever I work out with my improper fraction here. So I'm going to divide five by four. Remember we talked about that in class. Whatever's on top is being divided. Whatever's on the bottom you're dividing by. Okay. So four going to five, one time, one times four is four. I subtract, I get one, and that's my remainder. So my remainder goes as a numerator in a fraction over my original denominator, which was four. So I have one plus one and one fourth. All right, and that'll tell me the total amount of scoops that I need. This is one eighth, right? Yeah, one eighth. For my lentil salad and my lentil soup. I'm gonna erase this other thing here real quick. Bear with me while I do that. Go back to the pen. Okay. So I have one plus one and one quarter. So here I got a whole number and I have a whole number here. I just add those two numbers together. So I wind up with two and one quarter. And I'm dividing that by one eighth. Okay, so when I'm multiplying and dividing fractions, if I have a mixed number, I automatically have to turn them into improper fractions. So I multiply two times four and I get eight and I add the numerator so 8 plus 1 is 9. So my fraction I'm going to be working with is 9 over 4. All right. Now, we talked about something in class called keep, change, flip. And if you're a math teacher watching this and your heart stops in the middle of your chest, please know that I'm explaining what the flip actually means. And it's, it's a way to help them remember. Okay. So I want to keep this first fraction the same. All right, so I'm not going to change 9 over 4. That's what the K stands for. The C means I want to change it from a division problem to a multiplication problem. And then the F means I want to flip the second fraction. And remember, we talked about it in class. Flipping is really just simple terms for I want to use the reciprocal of 8 of 1 8. The reciprocal of 1 8 is 8 over 1. So we call it flipping because I'm switching the numerator with the denominator and the denominator with the numerator. So I'm using the reciprocal of 1 8, which is 8 first. Okay, so now there's two ways you can go about solving this from here. And I'm going to do my preferred method, which is to simplify before we multiply. So I look at 9 fourths, and I decide whether or not I want to simplify that, and I can't. All right, I can turn it into an improper, I mean a mixed number, but I don't want to do that, it won't help me. And I look at 8 first, and I see if I can simplify that, and I can't. So now I can look at a numerator from 1, with the denominator out of another fraction. I can't simplify 9 first, so I do the same thing with this one. I look at this numerator, and I look at this denominator, and I say, can I simplify 8 over eight with 4? Yes, I can. So I try to come up with what I'm going to divide by. In this case, I'm going to divide by 4. Okay, so 4 divided by 4, and then 8 divided by 4. That's my greatest common factor. And I'm going to get 1 right here, and I'm going to get 2 right here. Go back to my bluish colored pen. Now I can just multiply. I multiply 9 times 2, and I multiply 1 times 1, and that gives me, oops, 18. Let me make that 18 over 1, which simplifies to 18. Okay? The 18 in this particular problem represents the number of scoops it's going to take. Like if he has a big bag of lentils, like I mentioned, 
then he, how many scoops was it going to take to have enough for both of his recipes? Well, it's going to take 18 scoops. I don't know if I'm going to have enough room. I'm going to sure try scoops. No, no, I didn't. All right, scoops. All right, 18 scoops of lentils to make both those recipes. Let's look at the next problem. The next problem says, uh, before conducting some experiments, a scientist mixes, and I think this is one half, is what I had, it just didn't print up for some reason, one half gram of substance A with three quarter grams of substance B. If the scientist uses one eighth gram of each mixture for the experiment, then how many experiments can be conducted? So he's not saying one eighth of each of these substances, he's saying the mixture. So I know I need to combine substance A with substance B. We don't care what the substances are, we just want to combine them. So once again, I'm going to add I'm going to add one half with three quarters. All right, three fourths. Then I want to figure out this total mixture, how many one eighth gram scoops will I make? Okay, so I want to divide that answer by one eighth. All right, so we're going to follow the same steps that we did in the last problem. I'm going to add these two fractions together because we've got to use PEMDAS, we've got to use parentheses first. So I want to rewrite this. I know my common denominator for uh, one half and three quarters is going to have four in the denominator, just like we did in the last problem. A little scary, actually. I wish I wouldn't have done this with these two problems. But then I got to figure out what did I multiply four by to get four? Well, I multiplied it by one. So that means I multiply three times one to keep the fractions equivalent, and I get three fourths. So actually, this is not changing. This is the one that's going to change. I multiply two times 2 to get 4, that means I have to multiply 1 times 2 to get my numerator for that fraction. 2 fourths is equivalent to 1 half. All right, so now I can go ahead and add those two fractions together. And 2, four, uh, two fourths plus 3 fourths is going to be 5 over 4. And I'm dividing that, dividing that by 1 over 8. All right. Now, I want to look to see, well, let's, let's, let's go ahead and get our problem set up first. Because, like I said, I'll go back to what we talked about in class. I got the keep, change, flip. All right. I want to keep this first fraction the same. So I'm going to rewrite this over here. I got 5 over 4. And I'm going to change it from a division problem to a multiplication problem. And then I'm going to flip. I'm going to use a reciprocal of the second fraction. All right, the reciprocal of 1 8th, again, is 8 over 1. Then I'm going to simplify before I multiply. I can't simplify 5 fourths. I can turn it into a, a mixed number, but I don't want to do that. And I can't simplify 8 first. So then I look at a numerator out of one fraction with the denominator out of another fraction. 5 and 1, I can't simplify, but I can simplify 8 and 4. Let me change back to this red pen so you can see. I can divide both of these. Oops, I didn't switch. Dang it. I thought I did. Let's try that again. I can divide both of these by 4. Okay. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. All right. So now I am simplified. I can go ahead and answer my problem. 5 times 2 is 10. 1 times 1 is 1, which simplifies to 10. So that tells me I can conduct, because it says, how many experiments can be conducted? So that means 10 experiments, E, X, P, E, R, I, M, E. And this is so sloppy because I'm using my mouse. All right, 10 experiments can be conducted with this combined mixture using 1 8 gram scoops or using 1 8 gram of each of the substances. All right, so that's all you have to do. You just go to read your problem, figure out what you need, what's important. You can't just start taking the numbers and adding them together or dividing them or subtracting them. That's that's not always going to work. Okay, in these two problems, we use the same format. We, we combine two numbers and then we divided the sum by another number. Uh, that's not always going to be the case. Okay, so you have to read. You have to actually try to understand what the problem is asking you. All right, uh, make sure you answer the questions and I will see you guys at school.